So during the summer months, the margins can be the place to be. You can account for some huge weights on these commercials, often bigger fish, especially later on in the day. So today we're going to talk you through a few different tactics, hints and tips about margin fishing, hopefully catch you more fish. So when you get to your peg, the first job is to plumb up and that quite often determines what baits and what depths you're going to fish in. Today, for example, is probably a perfect margin really on a commercial. If I plumb up tight to the bank, I've got about 12 inch, but if I come away from it, I've got a nice steady slope, nice flattish bottom at around 18 inches, which is normally a nice depth to start at. You know, I could start at 18 inch if ferret fish are a problem or they come into shallow water, I've still got an option of fishing 12 inches. So because I've got that perfect depth, my number one go-to bait is going to be ground bait. I've got that shallow water, ferret fish aren't going to be a problem. I can mix it in a way that I can catch nicely in that depth. But if, if I did have, you know, a, a deeper margin that you could look to fish other baits sort of you know, if I had two, three foot, I could fish maybe hemp, corn, meat, maybe even hard pellets in, say, four foot would be a good depth. You've just got to plumb up, see what depths you've got, what you're given, and then you can plan your match from there and decide what baits to fish. So I mentioned there today about ground bait. I've mixed up a bag of Power Scope X. It's a sort of pellet-based ground bait, but importantly, it takes a lot of water. When I mix it, I mix it in a bucket, and I add water so it's a a mess really, a real stodgy mess, and then I leave it alone, sets like a cake really, and then I put it through a riddle, it takes a bit of time to push it through the riddle sometimes, but once it's through, it's a really heavy mix, and that's important because that's going to keep the fish down to the bottom where my hook bait is, and they're not going to waft it up all over the place, it's going to keep them pinned to the bottom where I want them to take my hook bait. Other ways you can make your ground bait really heavy is by adding bait booster. Seems a bit wrong adding bait booster to ground bait you've already mixed, but it works. It makes it really heavy, nice and stodgy, goes to the bottom and it's really heavy when you feed it in your peg. Other options, if you were in the middle of a session and fire working a few fish, you could really over wet the ground bait again and make it like a stodgy paste even. It just makes sure it goes straight to the bottom and it keeps fire fish to the minimum. Other options again, you could even add lots of particles, say hemp, corn, heavier particles into that mix and it pulls the ground bait down to the bottom, breaks down on the bottom where you want those fish to feed. So how do I feed my peg? Well initially, more often than not, it's with a big pot like this. You can scoop plenty of ground bait in that pot, holds a lot of bait, just a little squeeze like that and that's often enough to get fish in the peg. But once they're there, you've got to think a little bit how you feed. Sometimes you can go in after every fish with a pot like this and go straight over the top of that pile and catch fish. Sometimes it's too much bait though. So that's when a nice big cab pot like this comes into play. Again, you can feed in loose. That's often quite good for shallow water, say a foot or less. But when you face with sort of 18 inches or more, you've got to think about how you're going to feed. And that's quite often by squeezing a ball like this and feeding like that, it makes sure that bait gets to the bottom. Like I said before, keeps foul hooked fish to a minimum and keeps them feeding on the bottom where your hook bait is. Alternatively, you can just feed it loose but give it a bit of a squeeze, hold it above the surface and then it will come up, come out in one lump. Um, and again, when you're fishing in slightly deeper water, that can be better than feeding it in loose. So it's worth having a little play with how you're feeding during a session, a bit of trial and error, and see what works on the day. So there's several hook bait options that I use when I'm fishing over ground bait down the edge. First one that comes to mind is two big dendrobinas, normally on a size 12 or 14 maybe. Nice big visual hook bait that they can feel and quite often more than not, the bites are just savage on that. Float flies under, it's a nice big hook bait for them to pick out in amongst that ground bait, and that can often pick out them big fish. Alternatively, I've got maggots, you know, five, six, seven, maybe even more of them on a decent size hook. Again, it's a visual hook bait, but it's quite lightweight, so they can suck it in quite easily. But if there are a lot of fish in my peg, then Good old faithful sweet corn. It's a nice heavy bait, keeps it pinned on the bottom 
and when there are a lot of fish there in your peg that can often be the one. So I'm going to talk you through typical margin rigs when fishing over ground bait. I've set up two rigs today both on 13 hollow that might not sound heavy but it's what I like to use for bigger carp more often than not. Um, it just gives them well allows them to charge off like they often do but without putting too much pressure on the hook it just gives me a bit more time to maybe turn that fish and land it you know you're not in any rush some of these fish are you know they might average 10 pound and if you're fishing you know a five hour match for 10 pound fish you know you, you, don't, you don't need to catch them too often so like nice elastic like this just allows you to take your time and make sure you land every fish so coming to the rig normally starts with 019 power line main line if it's a snaggy swim i'll step up to 021 but more often than not 019 does your job this is my rig for the shallower water so i've set up a carp shallow nice round body short float it's a 4 by 12 so it's reasonably heavy in that shallow water and then what i've done with that is i've set up and ready tied hook length of 015 to a size 14 XSH. Then on the other rig, which is the one I intend to fish the most, it's in slightly deeper water, 18 inch, so I've opted for a slightly different float with a nice big bristle. It's an edge, 4x12, same as before, but this time I've got a slightly bigger hook. I've got a size 12 XSH, and I'm gonna start off by fishing two big worms and see how, see how it goes. Alternatively, I can swap down to say a 14 if I want to fish a grain of corn, but I'm going to start off positively with a nice big hook and see how it goes. Oh, so there we go, that was exactly what we were looking for. Float shot under. I ignored all the sideways bites where the fish are rubbing against the rig just waited for that nice positive bite and this fish is in the mouth. So I'm just going to take it nice and steady, that 13 hollow is nice and soft. I'm only fishing about 5 metres down the edge so I'm just going to take my time. You might notice I've got a bit hanging out as well with my top kit, I've got a little tight bead there just to hold it in. And if I do hook a big fish it charges off and then I've got that bit of cushion, it will just slip through and gives me a bit more time to turn that fish before it breaks me. This one's coming nice and steady. Nice little common carp that. Nice weight builder. Maybe six, seven pounds. So it's a weight builder on a commercial like this. Got his two worms hanging out of his mouth. Nice big hook bait. So now I'm gonna probably feed again with a big pot but you know if I have got too many fish in the peg then I'll maybe scale down to a smaller pot, nice smaller si size pile of bait for a cab pot and hopefully carry on catching but you know we'll see how it goes with a big pot and uh, go from there. 